This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. A very respected attorney, Randy Zellin, is with us today. And we are talking about Alec Murdoch. What I specifically want to discuss with you, Randy, from a legal perspective uh, is the strange choice for Alec Murdoch from behind bars to now say that he invented Miss Satterfield's purported statement that dogs caused her to fall to force his insurers to make settlement payments. It's very bizarre. It almost seems evil as if trying to punish the Satterfield family, uh, trying to make the insurance companies think, well, the money is over there. We should uh, recover that from that family. But that's not really what seems to be going on at all. Murdoch, obviously, a convicted murderer, a serial liar. Why do this now? You are asking me no the same way you are asking yourself <laughs> to get into the head yeah. of someone who has been convicted of killing his wife and son, who staged his own homicide, <laughs> who has stolen millions and millions and millions of dollars, not just from his employer, mm -hmm. not just from his clients, but this is a family law firm. Yeah. So why Alec Murdoch would do anything. <laughs> I don't know that there is a human being equipped intellectually, professionally, or other who can say, I understand why he did this. So I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I'm not really sure why <clears throat> there are all of these subsequent indictments and criminal proceedings against him. Uh, how many life sentences mm -hmm. can you give one human being? Now, it's one thing if they're doing it in an effort to try to trigger some other insurance or fund or mechanism for victims to recover. But other than that, I mean, the taxpayers at some point should wake up and say, uh, 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 why are we doing this? Yeah. Uh, that that seems to be the question. The the thing I land on the most is is exactly what you just said, or the victims of him having their own uh, moment of justice. Obviously, he's in jail forever, but to have it set in court, to have him found guilty on the charges of what he did, rather than just push them under the rug because it doesn't matter really that much anymore whether he's found guilty. I would think that would be another one. There's there's no doubt. Again, for me. It is one thing if there is some common sense and practical reason. I'm not talking about a legal reason. This mm -hmm. is this for me comes down to just because you can do something doesn't mean that you always should. But, for example, there are instances where if a lawyer steals clients money. Various state bar organizations require that attorneys pay into a fund every year. And that fund is used to compensate victims of attorney thefts. So if there was some legal reason why they needed to do something in order to trigger some relief for victims from this fund, okay. if there was a reason why they needed to change something or tweak something or do something so there would be insurance coverage or Let's say the insurance company dropped the ball mm -hmm. and now you need to do something to trigger a claim against an insurance company. If there was some practical reason to continue to go after Alec Murdoch, then I'm all for it. And maybe he's all for it. Mm -hmm. But short of that, just to say we've beaten him again and maybe even just to say we've given some closure, some sense of justice to the victims. Maybe I understand that as, as much as I possibly could, but just to do it because you can, yeah. to me, just seems silly. The insurance company, uh, Nautilus, uh, asking now for the money back after that uh, revelation that was made, uh, but they're not quite sure where they're going to get it. Murdaugh is saying, well, you know, that uh, you know, it was for the this family, but he never gave it to that family. Exactly. Was, so yeah. listen, maybe this is some ingenious thing that, 
is is above above my pay grade and above my intellectual comprehension where okay the insurance company is doing this to get the money back from the law firm now look to the law firm's insurance company to pay out and then the insurance company then can turn around and give the money that they recover from the law firm's insurance company to the family of Gloria Satterfield. Maybe that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I just have not practiced long enough. And I've been doing it for 35 <laughs> years to, to have been able to see that from the get go. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's very bizarre the way this is going. Eric Bland, uh, their, uh, the attorney for the Satterfields, uh, asking the judge, obviously, not only to deny the request uh, to uh, dismiss the confession of judgment, but also ask that the court uh, send a strong message to Murdaugh and his attorneys to stop victimizing his uh, vi- the victims, his clients, and weaponizing the legal system against them to try and extract this sort of money, uh, even going as far as saying that the attorneys should be sanctioned. Uh, is, is this... Tell me about that, that process of being sanctioned. What exactly does that mean? And uh, do the attorneys of Murdoch need to have something like that come to them, with it appearing that they're almost harassing victims at this point? Well, when you talk about sanctions, yeah, sanctions is a tool used by the court to punish an attorney. Typically, those sanctions are financial in nature. Mm -hmm. And when an attorney behaves frivolously, let's say, files a motion or files papers, but there's absolutely no legal basis to do so and no reasonable basis for arguing that the existing law should be reversed or changed, that's an example of being frivolous. Um, being Being held in contempt of court where your behavior is inconsistent with the proper decorum to be observed by an attorney, that could render you subject to sanctions. If you continue to ignore an order of a court, that could be something that would subject you to sanctions in addition to being found in contempt of court. And then of course, listen, you go around and you're harassing witnesses, you could be charged criminally with tampering with a witness. Mm -hmm. So. I will say that far more often than not, the threat of sanctions, unless it's coming from the court, is typically taken with a grain of salt when it's coming from another lawyer, threatening a lawyer with sanctions. Mm -hmm. So it's not as it's it's made to be dramatic when uh, when the Eric Bland is saying that it's it's just a very different lawyers say it against other lawyers all the time. It's a soundbite. When a judge says it. Yeah. Now you stand up and square your shoulders and take mm-hmm. notice. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, why do you think, uh, and this is, I just want your opinion here. Why do his attorneys still stick with him? Why are they still his attorneys at this point? Why haven't they walked away uh, from the madness that is Alec Murdoch? Is there in any way, shape or form that this is a good professional move for them to, to stick with him? Well, I think we can answer it in a few ways. Number one, there's the old saying that even bad press is better than no press at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, Second of all, it does give them the opportunity to try to get Murdoch's story out there, their story out there in terms of trying to right any wrongs. Also, keep in mind that to the extent that there are active court proceedings going on, the only person who can let an attorney out of a case is the judge. Okay. You can't just walk away when you file the notice notice of appearance. In a court, you can't just simply say, I quit. It's for a judge to let you out. And maybe they're concerned that the judge won't let them out. Um, There could be, again, a whole host of reasons. This this case checks off so many boxes of just the bizarre and the pushing of the envelope of our entire system of justice and, and what goes on that it's actually, I think, life what is it? Um, it's life imitating art or art imitating life. In other words, what's actually going on is, is more astounding and more unbelievable than what someone could script yeah. for a movie or a, a Netflix series. 
This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruski. Always uh, a trip, I guess you could say, as we try to examine the inner workings of Alec Murdaugh's mind. You got to wonder sometimes if he even really knows how it's working or why. If you like the podcast, be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking episodes or discussions of our cases. You can get an ad-free experience through Apple Podcasts right now. Go ahead and check that out on Apple Podcasts. You can try it for three days free. When you become a premium subscriber, you get access to all of our podcasts in their entirety, ad-free, the whole True Crime Today family. Check that out on Apple Podcasts. I'm Tony Bruski. Stay with us.